Hi everyone. Can you guys hear me fine? Okay, awesome. Uh, my name is Divya Jain. I work for Game Time. If you haven't heard about Game Time, we sell tickets at amazing prices for any of the sports games, theater, concerts, especially focusing on the last minute ticket deals. So check it out. <laughs> so I have been uh, doing Android development for about three years now, and it's been quite an exciting journey. So today I'll be talking about a problem. And the problem is that we as users of an app having to manually write or input the same piece of information again and again repetitively. There's only so many times one can spell their name correctly, right? I mean, so, um, but on a serious note, if we are using any piece of technology, we are basically filling in some sort of input manually at least a couple of times a day. And if you're doing it again and again, it becomes a time consuming task, which is also error prone because we are humans after all, which leads to user frustration and ultimately not a very happy user experience. So the solution, the Android Autofill Framework. As the name suggests, it is a framework which you, the user, prefeeds the data into and it takes care of autofilling the views in other apps with this data as needed which means that there is no user typing, and also it reduces the errors to the minimal. So let's talk about its basic components. Of course, we have the autofill service, which are apps such as uh, password managers, etc., that actually save and store the user information that can be, it, they save it once, and then you, they can be used across multiple apps. Then we have the autofill client, which, is, which are the apps that actually provides these views that needs to be filled out or hold the user data. And then we have the Android system, which is the OS that defines the workflow and provides the infrastructure that makes these service, autofill service and client work together. So first, let's talk about it from the client perspective. So if you're working on an app which asks user for any sort of input data, how do we integrate autofill framework in it? We need the first basic component, which is an autofill service configured on your device. Now, Android autofill framework was introduced as part of Android Oreo. So most of the devices using Android 8.0 or above usually ships with an autofill service. And it's very easy to enable it in your settings. The path is right there on the screen. But even if your device doesn't have an autofill service, there are tons of third-party services like 1Password, Dashlane, LastPass, et cetera, out there in the form of password managers, which cater to different data types. So based on your use case, you can choose from those or actually create a custom auto uh, autofill service on your own, which I'll talk about in a while. Also, the autofill service is bound to the Android system only when the right permission, which is the bind autofill service, is declared in your Android manifest file. So once the autofill service is enabled, it tries to determine what data is needed based on the client view. And this is usually done through a heuristic approach, but which always leaves some scope of unpredictable behavior by the service. So in order to ensure that the service correctly identifies the type of the form input, and in order to assist the service, we can provide an attribute called the autofill hints in our edit views uh, expecting an input. So for example, here you see the if it's a password field, you just declare the autofill uh, hint attribute as password, or email address, username, et cetera. And there are a bunch of predefined constants then we can, that we can use to enable the service to understand the kind of data needed, and that's provided in the link uh, at the bottom of the slide. We can also help the autofill service by specifying which fields are important for autofill and which can be ignored. And again, this can, be, this can depend on different use cases. But the idea is that it, again, prevents the autofill service to heuristically determine if the view should be autofilled or not and prevent any unpredictable behavior. So uh, for that, we have the important for, uh, important for autofill attribute, which can have any of these five different values. 
And the default one is auto, which is basically you letting the Android system heuristically determine if the view is important for autofill or not. If you uh, specify yes, that means the view is absolutely important. No means the view is not important. There are other two variants which are no, no exclude descendants and yes exclude descendants. The no, uh, the no part of it uh, says that the whole auto, the whole view which can have uh, children's uh, ch child subviews as well, is not important for autofill. So the example for that can be if your uh, screen has like a spreadsheet or an editor, and you just man the you want the user to manually enter data, then you define no exclude descendants. But when you uh, specify yes, exclude de uh, descendants, that means the view is important for autofill, but the children are not. Um, if you're using uh, another thing that you can do is if you're using autofill service, uh, service like Google, you can actually make it easier for the user by sharing this autofill data in between the web and the Android app. So let's say you could, uh, user logins to the website using an autofill service. If the website and the app are associated with each other, the user will have the same autofill data available to enter into the Android app, which further leads to an enhanced user experience. So the steps for that is A, create a digital asset link JSON file, which contains the details of both your website and the Android app, uh, which can be your uh, example like package name, et cetera. Then actually specify the relation between the two which here is to get common login credentials. Then host it at your web, web domain. And then declare the link to this JSON file as an association in your Android manifest file. So this way, uh, the same autofill data will be available to the user both in your website and the Android app. And there's a, uh, these steps are mentioned in great detail, again, at the bottom of the, at the link provided. We also have something called the Autofill Manager class, which provides way for custom views to integrate uh, with the Autofill framework lifecycle. So for example, you can use the uh, is enabled method of the Autofill, Autofill Manager class to check if Autofill service is enabled and ensure providing a consistent, uh, consistent user experience. Or you can use the cancel method to um, cancel the current Autofill context which can be helpful in certain cases, for example, if your form needs to be reset for some reason, et cetera. You can also uh, force an autofill with the help of the request autofill method, which might be helpful uh, if it's in response to a user action. After the user is done filling in the information, there is a, a save for autofill dialog, which usually finishes the autofill context, but sometimes you might need to explicitly tell the framework to finish in which case the autofill manager has a commit method, which is also useful. So it all depends on various use cases, but these are some of the ways in which we can ensure that autofill is implemented correctly in order to ensure a robust experience. So now let's talk about the autofill process under the hood. What, what exactly happens as part of the basic workflow? So it has the following steps. A, the user focuses on an editable view. The view calls the autofill manager notify view entered method. A view structure, a view structure representing all views in your current screen is created. The Android system binds to the autofill service that you selected and calls the onConnected method. The service receives the view structure through the onFill request method. The service replies through the fill callback on success method and passes a fill response as part uh, object as part of it. The Android system then unbinds from the service uh, by calling the on disconnected method. And then the Android system displays this autofill UI to the user. The user picks up the data, picks up the option of the data that it needs to uh, be filled in the view. And then the proper views are autofilled. So the benefit of this basic workflow is that the system is bound to the autofill service for a very minimum amount of time. Because every call is stateless, and also for every request, it binds, waits for the response, and then unbinds, which ensures an efficient use of the system resources. Now, internally, the onfill request method actually parses the view structure looking for autofillable views. 
And this is where the hints that we provided or the importance that we provided is helpful for the service to determine which views are, uh, which views are uh, autofillable or not. Then it matches these autofillable views with the user's data. Then it creates a data set for each set of the user's data that matches those fields. So for example, if it's a password, then it will create a, uh, if it's a username and password, it will, the uh, service will create a data set containing of the data for the username and the password field. Then it fills the data, so it fills the data, data set with the proper autofill IDs and the values. And then it adds this data set to the fill response uh, object, which is passed back to the client in the form of fill callback on success method. So now let's talk about the, uh, from the autofill service perspective, and especially if you want to create your own service. Uh, there's a great sample provided by Google, and I've uh, included the link to the actual GitHub repository where a sample autofill service exists, but I'll just briefly explain what all steps are needed. So the first will be in the, in your, in the Android manifest file of your uh, Android app. You will declare the service with the service element, which will contain various information like the name, the right permission of the uh, bind autofill service, the intent filter, and the optional metadata to provide additional um, config parameters. Then after declaring the service in the manifest, we can check if the user has our, has our current service enabled in the device. And for that, we have the has enabled auto service <coughs> method of the auto uh, fill manager class available. And if it's not the current service, then we can actually request the server, uh, request the user to change this autofill setting by using the action request cell autofill service intent, which returns a result okay if the user selected our service or not. Once the service is enabled, when the user is interacting with the input views in their app, the service receives a request through the onfill request method, as I explained before. And each request has an assist structure associated with it, in which, which automatically creates the assist data. So the autofill service now checks if it has data to satisfy the request. If yes, then it packages da this data into the data set object, which is then encapsulated in the fill response object and passed in the fill callback on success method. So again, now the service can have multiple data sets that satisfies the request. For example, if you are looking to input a payment method, you can have multiple credit cards stored in your uh, data. So in which case, the fill response object will have multiple data sets included in it. And as a user on the UI, you'll see a picker to choose from the different data options. Now, how does the service determine the right data to serve? Again, reiterating the assist structure object that is passed in the onfill request method actually contains the view node object, which consists of information uh, about the different views that needs to be autofilled and their attributes like the hints and the importance, et cetera, so which assists the service in determining the appropriate data. Of course, the autofill service itself needs the actual data in order to cater to these autofill requests. So how do we get, this, get the autofill service this data? The service needs to indicate that it is interested in storing the data that the user is manually inputting. So for this, the service includes a save info object in the autofill response to the app, and this object basically fulfills the purpose of saving the user data. The save info object actually consists of um, two different things. It's the save data value, which if you can see in the code, it's again, ba the, it basically says what kind of data it is, which can be a password, email address, credit card, et cetera. And also it uh, saves the minimum set of views that needs to be filled in order to trigger the save request. When, for example, when it's a login screen, it will usually be a combination of a username and a password or email address and password. So this code here basically describes a sample fill response object which an autofill service will send back to the client, which contains the data set that the service provides to autofill and also the intent of uh, saving the info. So we'll uh, send the same info set, which contains the save data value and the set of views. Now, another thing, in order for your autofill service to provide 
predictable and efficient data and uh, not have an unpredictable behavior. It is necessary that it organizes the data logically in groups based on the kind of data. For example, a partition like credential should only contain fields that a user will use during authentication. Or a partition like payment should only contain information related to different payment methods that a user might have. So this data partitioning is very important and necessary because it, uh, it protects the user data and we don't want to expose the data from multiple partitions at the same time. Instead, the service actually uses the hints and the other attributes provided to it to determine the necessary partition that it need, needs to send and fulfills the request by sending only the minimum data that the client needs. So again, reiterating this uh, whole thing that I explained right now and how to test your app with an autofill framework. If your app consists of any input fields or need the user to fill some kind of information, make sure to test your app and optimize it so that it works appropriately with an autofill service to ensure a good user experience. Which means install an autofill service which can be uh, Google, any third party, or a custom created one. Enable the service by going to the system settings in your device. Help service analyze the data requirements by providing all the helpful attributes that it might need, like hints, importance, etc. Focus on a view which would be appropriate for autofill data. Enter the info and then confirm the save for autofill dialog, which will save the, save the data in your service. And then go back to the view focus again and test if the right data is autofilled or triggered for you to choose from. So this is the Android autofill framework in a nutshell. Of course, there are many like advanced concepts associated with it, like how to support custom views or user authentication, data form formatting, et cetera. But if you ever want to have a more in-depth discussion, you can DM me on Twitter anytime. But the whole idea is that whether it's a new app or an existing one, do configure your app with an um, for autofill if it's not, because it's super helpful and improves the user experience tremendously. So thank you for listening and for being here.